Hi there, welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. We're very glad you joined us today. We are talking about giving thanks during hard times. And before we jump into that, my friend and co-host Jamie is going to open us up in a word of prayer. God, we just begin this episode with um, just hearts ready to hear from you. And we know that this is a difficult topic, that giving thanks in hard times is not always easy. And we just pray, God, that you would open our, open our hearts to whatever you have for us today and just help us to be encouraged and, and to truly be able to cultivate thankfulness, no matter what our circumstances. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, our verse of the day today is one that might be familiar to you. It is 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 and 18, and it says, Pray without ceasing, give thanks in every circumstance, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And I had never thought about it this way. I just think of give thanks in every circumstance, but in the context of a podcast on prayer. Um, just that verse 17, I was just going to have verse 18, but verse 17, pray without ceasing and then give thanks in every circumstance. It's just kind of like, I almost read it as don't, don't stop praying and asking, but no matter what comes of, you know, the aftermath of those prayers, give thanks for that because that is God's will for you. You know, whatever it is, it's God's will for us to give thanks in all circumstances. Um, but just because hard times happen doesn't mean God is with is not with us or that he's not listening to our prayers. And I'd never put those two verses together in that way before. Yeah, I like how you put that. I hadn't thought about it in that context either, how one really does lead into the other. Well, our just for fun question today is to think of a time when you were thankful for something small or frivolous. Do you have an example of that? Alana. I do. So last summer we ended up moving and we had packed up the whole kitchen, but it was still going to be several days, you know, before we actually moved. So for several days we were eating off of paper plates and just like whatever we could heat up in the microwaves, so like a lot of canned stuff. Like I think at least one meal a day was nacho chips, you know, like it was just whatever was quick and easy. And then it was the day before moving day and we had even packed up the last of those things and cleaned up the kitchen and so at that point we were like super rural so that the nearest restaurant was like almost an hour drive away but we really didn't have many other options <laughs> and so we went to this restaurant for dinner took the family and the food was fine it wasn't bad food but I almost got teary-eyed because it was like my first actual meal with like vegetables and like that you oh. could eat with a real fork and <laughs> I just remember feeling like and also my husband had been commuting almost an hour each way for a couple weeks and so that left mm -hmm. the boys and me just totally home alone no way to get anywhere so this was my first time out of the house in a really long time plus my first actual meal and I remember like getting misty-eyed I was just so thankful I felt like a real person <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, I wasn't sure how I was going to answer this question, but your example kind of reminded me of, um, I was, I, I've had, I think twice in my adult life, I can remember being sick to the point where I couldn't get out of bed and I mm -hmm. couldn't function. And I basically had to have, you know, I don't, I don't even know how my kids survived, but <laughs> yeah, um, my husband had to take off work one, but this is the first of those two times. And we lived in Arizona and I was laid up for several days. And I just felt like, man, is this ever going to end? Am I ever going to be myself? I remember getting out of bed and it was the first time I was able to prepare like a, a meal for mm -hmm. myself or my son, you know, at the time I had one kid and, um, I, a friend had given me this stuff. It's, um, camu powder. It's like, it, it has like, I don't know, a lot of times more vitamin C than orange juice, or it's just huh. very high in vitamin C. And it didn't taste really good, but I thought this would be a great time to try it because I hadn't tried right. it before. And so I tried it and it gave me like, I had energy and I felt like, not like a normal person, but like I could actually make food without <laughs> like, you know, feeling dead. And I just remember being like, thank you, God, for wellness. And I know there are people out there that can relate to that on probably a regular basis. You know, if you're right. going through chronic illness or 
chemo or whatever it is that, you know, on a regular basis, just, but it was just like, thank you that I can make this lunch right now for my son and stand up mm-hmm. well. Yeah. Which is sad because how often is busy moms are like, oh, I've got to cook food for my kids again. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. I had something similar where my husband just came back from a week long business trip and last night, or two nights ago was maybe like the first, you know, full sit down meal we had really had since he left. Because when he's gone, I just, I, I do what's quick and easy. (laughs) It's just me and the kids. And I did really appreciate this. Oh, okay. Yeah. It takes more work, but it's worth it. Yeah. Well, today we are talking about giving thanks during the hard times. And I guess we could kind of clump this into, you know, like the big hard times, like you mentioned chemo or chronic illness or things like that. And even just the minor nuisances, you know, um, you get stuck in a traffic jam. And instead of boiling over with rage and impatience, you say, all right, God, this must be what you want me to be doing with my time, (laughs) you know? So what what tips do we have or where do we want to start this discussion i don't know i guess with um i don't know do you have any examples of times that you have had to give thanks in hard times big or small can you think of anything um, i'm, I'm to- sure there are i know one thing that we do very regularly with the kids is when they are disappointed about something. I think I've even mentioned it on the podcast before. We have our even though prayers. Yes. You know, thank you, God, that whatever happened, even though that's disappointing. You know, thank you, God, that I'm sick, even though it's too bad I won't be able to go to this birthday party or whatever. We're not trying to make them happy that they didn't get their way, but it really is just teaching okay, I didn't get my way. I can acknowledge that that's disappointing, but I can still give thanks. Yeah. And I feel it's important when we're talking about giving thanks in hard times that it doesn't necessarily mean that we just put on a happy face. You know what I mean? Like that's why Mm -hmm. we always include the even though. We don't just say, you know, thanks that I don't get to go to my friend's party. You know, (laughs) it's thank you, even though I wish I could have gone. Yeah. And, and yeah, being real about it. Well, I think about times that we've recorded and we've had, boy, countless technical difficulties along the way, or we've gotten ready to record and something happens. And Mm -hmm. there've been times when we've made a point to do that, you know, where it's like, okay, we've got to, it is, wow, God, this is annoying. And we really wanted to get this done, but Thank you for that technical difficulty because I think we've, at this point with the podcast, we've kind of seen enough times that God has used those delays to either, sometimes it's been a delay of more than a day and mm-hmm. something has happened in our lives that enriched right. the discussion or, mm-hmm. and even if it doesn't just, um, I don't know if I said this on one of our episodes or not, but I heard somewhere and maybe you were even the one to tell me that, um, our time on earth is a gift because it's the only time that we are able to give thanks to God and praise him in the midst of difficulty to yeah. kind of like, you know, praise mm-hmm. in spite of the difficulty. And um, because in heaven, everything's going to be perfect and we're not going right. to have that opportunity to be tested and to rise above it and stick it to the enemy, you know, yeah. if, if, if that's the way you want to look at it. Um, no, I, I remember that was, that came from me, but I, it wasn't from me. It was from an article I read where there was a grandpa, I think he was on a mission trip and found out that either his grandson was gravely ill or had already died. I forget the details. And it just talked about this process they went through. And yeah, those were his words coming to realize that in heaven, we're never going to have the chance to give thanks for bad things because Mm -hmm. bad things aren't going to exist. And so it, it actually is a privilege and opportunity on earth that we only get in this lifetime. And that's to praise God for tragedies all the way down to just minor annoyances. I think of, I think it's in the 23rd Psalm where it talks about, he prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies, you know? Mm -hmm. And so like, it's almost our opportunity to reverse that and to praise God in front of Satan and the demons, you know, to say, you're not going to have victory. God will not be robbed of his glory. I just think kind of, 
you know, praising God in the presence of his enemies because Satan's not going to be there in the end. Yeah. So. I know we've mentioned her before on the show. So if you're a regular listener, it's not a surprise that Jamie and I are both kind of Corey Ten Boom fangirls. <laughs> but, um, and so it was funny when we were talking about the show, I think we both were like, oh, we need to include this story, you yeah, know, and it wasn't one we had necessarily mm-hmm. talked about before. But do you want to, do you want to share the story of the fleas? It's not super fresh in my memory. Is it fresh in yours? Um, just that Corey and her sister were in a concentration camp in Germany and they were both assigned to this one like bunkhouse that was kind of known to be the worst. It was infested with fleas and filthy. And so there were just so many bad things happening and Corey's sister um, had been able to, one of them had been able to smuggle a Bible in. And so they were actually reading scripture in this bunkhouse. And her sister actually said, you know, we need to give thanks. And they had maybe read this, give thanks in all things. And she said, we need to give thanks. And so they were praying. And her sister said, and thank you, God, for the fleas. And Corey said, you know, at that moment, she wondered, how could you give thanks for the fleas? What possible benefit do fleas have? Mm -hmm. And then I think she says later on, they realized that they were able to read the Bible and women come to know the Lord because their bunkhouse was so flea infested that none of the guards would even go in there. It was disgusting and they couldn't even stand it. And so the fleas were the reason that the gospel went out. And so she said it was only later that she was able to see the wisdom in that. And we may never see the reason for our fleas. You know, it's not like we're always going to see oh yeah, that's why God let that happen. Or, oh, that's why, you know, we're not always going to see it, but she had the, you know, it's a really cool example of even if you never know, yeah, God's doing something, you know, God is at work still. Mm -hmm. Well, and it also, I remember how the fleas kept those particular women from being assaulted to the degree that women in less infested areas were because the guards just didn't want to, go there at all so it was physical protection as well oh yeah and so this is all from the hiding place the the book um Mm -hmm. yeah i've never seen the movie have you no i haven't i didn't i don't know if i knew there was a movie it's really old i know that much but no i haven't seen it but yeah very just inspiring story and what i love Mm -hmm. about corey timbom is she's very real you know my husband and i before we had kids we would actually like read out loud to each other. So one of us would be doing dishes and one would be reading and then we'd switch or something. And that was one of the ones we read. And we both came away realizing like her sister Betsy was an angel and a saint. And Corey was like, she got grumpy. She like, she was just what you would like. She, she was a real person. Right. Even so you see God just really sustaining her. Um, yeah, so I it it's just a neat story because sometimes I think if it had been switched and if Betsy had been the one to survive, there almost would have been this sense of okay, she's like just supernatural, you know, like she's. <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? Did you have that same sense? You know what? To be honest, I have not read the book. I've read oh, excerpts. Really? No, and I can't. I, every time we talk about this, I think oh, I have hilarious. to read that. No, I've read many excerpts from yeah. the book, and I but I have never read the book all the way through. So, I um, but I also wonder if she would feel like she was betraying the memory of Corey by, you know, making her look bad or you know, oh, know. approachable yeah. or human. So right. you know, no, um, really, really funny. neat. Yeah, no, it's been a neat story. It was even to the point where um, Scott and I had thrown around Corey as a name if we ever had a little girl. Oh, yeah, that's cool. I just really, really appreciate her. So I don't know that people in heaven can listen to podcasts. I kind of sort of doubt it, but we will give Corey a shout out when we get there. <laughs> that's for sure. Corey, we'll, we'll have some coffee or yes. maybe, maybe she drinks tea. I don't know. She might. <laughs> Well, let's go back to talking about giving thanks. Do you have a story similar to that of just like giving thanks um, for something in your own life? Or maybe one of those stories like the fleas where like it was something bad, but then you were able to see how God was using that? I think when my husband, uh, when my husband was let go from a job in 
Virginia um, that they were just downsizing and he was the last one to be hired. So he was the first one to go mm-hmm. and he was, you know, he was pretty upset about it. And we both were, he was, I was working at the time full time, but his income was definitely the one that we relied on more. Right. And so um, at the time I remember like it was through gritted teeth and I don't even know if I did it with him. I almost think I may have felt like saying that in prayer with him because it wasn't my job that was lost would have been like minimizing or minimizing his trial or like I didn't have the right to thank God for him. But I remember for myself that I said, God, thank you for this. I know that you're doing something in this, but it was through gritted teeth and not knowing what was going to happen. But looking back, I can see just, um, the pinching pennies and the like struggle drew my husband and I closer together. It made us realize, you know, I don't know. I just think of packing his lunches and making his coffee in the mornings. And we joke because there was like a week (laughs) where I packed. It was, (laughs) okay. It was after Thanksgiving. It was after Thanksgiving and I packed like dressing. (laughs) in his lunch for like big hunks of bread dressing in his Uh lunch, like stuffing from Thanksgiving in his lunch for like a week straight until like his friends at work were just like, does your wife hate you? (laughs) (laughs) So He didn't always have, you know, abundant lunches and I, I, you know, but just the act of getting up earlier, packing lunch so he didn't have to buy something during the week or whatever. It was just a good experience. And, and ultimately that was the, the, that loss of that job, um, led to him being hired by the company that he works for now that has taken us to the different places, Las Vegas and Tucson and Alaska. Which so is how we met, which yeah. is how we started becoming prayer partners, That's which is how right. we got to the podcast. Yeah. My husband has a neat story where he can trace back a car accident when he was like maybe 21 to us getting married, you know, like oh, wow. years, years later. So he had a job and they wanted him to transfer to Southern California. And so he was driving and he wasn't prepared for Las Vegas traffic. So he was like basically driving through the Las Vegas area during rush hour and wasn't prepared, you know, to go from 60 to zero (laughs) and basically just slammed into the guy in front of him. And there was a motorcycle cop who saw the thing and called for a body bag because he was certain that, you know, Scott couldn't have survived that. But thankfully he wasn't hurt at all. And neither was the other car. The car was totaled. And, but the other driver was fine. Scott was fine. But it was really interesting because since his car was totaled, he couldn't go to the church that he had been thinking he was going to go to and instead started going to this other church. And, you know, 12 more steps like that led to how he and I met. And so it was just really interesting, some of those minor things that can change everything. It is. Well, my husband, um, actually he he was very upset because his junior year of high school, his dad who was in the Navy, um, was told that he had to move. And Matt obviously was not really excited about that. (laughs) He wanted to spend his, you know, he had made all these friends. And Mm -hmm. so he was trying to find a way to stay, um, in Texas, his, his junior year for his senior year. And um, he ended up going with them and they moved. But that chain of events led to him changing his mind about what he was going to do and going to the college that we went to and us meeting and getting married. So, yeah, they're just there's so many different things that we can look back on. So that could be helpful, you know, in this when you're in the midst of of difficult things, looking back on other times that looked bad, that turned out good. And of course, there are lots of biblical examples of those kinds of things, too. But. Sure. Well, you know, your story reminded me that I wouldn't have met Scott if I hadn't gotten a cold. And you think of a cold as just a minor nuisance. Right. But I was scheduled to go on a church retreat when I was in college, got a cold, decided I better stay home. And that was the weekend that Scott and I met. So it's just really interesting, you know, these sometimes minor things, you know, like losing your job or totaling your car are kind of more major, Mm -hmm. but even a minor thing like getting a cold can change the course of your entire life. Mm -hmm. (laughs) 
Yeah, so, it definitely can. And and change it for the better. So that's kind of kind of fun. So let's talk about just practical tips. Now, you know, sometimes these are just minor nuisances, but sometimes these are you know, big life events, losing a job, struggling with some kind of illness, grieving something. And even in these cases, you know, the verse in Thessalonians is very clear, pray without ceasing, give thanks in every circumstance. And, you know, we could talk a lot about giving thanks for all of our blessings, but what are some of the tips for practicing the habit of giving thanks, even when you're grieving or something really difficult has come up? I think maybe the first step is acknowledging your, validating and acknowledging your emotions and giving yourself permission to be disappointed or sad or grieve. Um, Because like you said earlier, I think as Christians, sometimes we feel like, well, I have to be careful. I've even heard people say this, be careful how you respond to adversity because people are watching. Oh, yeah. (laughs) You know, they know you're a Christian. They're just looking for reasons to say, oh, yeah. Christianity doesn't really work. This person's just as upset as anyone, but we're people, you know, and, and to acknowledge that in the Psalms, there's lots of lament and lots of there's angst and (laughs) angst and anger and finger pointing and God can handle it. And so, you know, acknowledging your feelings and maybe even journaling or writing out or speaking out loud or writing a letter to God, just something therapeutic to say, God, this is where I am, but, and, and maybe moving on Mm -hmm. like, and it almost makes the offering sweeter. I think when you can acknowledge, Hey, I'm not okay, but God, I love you. And I trust you. And here's this, I'm going to put it at your feet. Yeah. No, I absolutely like, I feel like we could close the episode right now. (laughs) You really summed it up. You know, I, I get very frustrated when people feel this added pressure to be happy and chipper, even when bad things happen because they're Christians, because non-Christians, you know, spoiler alert, they're not stupid and they can tell when you're being phony. Right. And it's kind of an insult to God, humanity, your own self-integrity when you pretend like everything's fine when it's not. Yeah, I think so too. And then what also happens is, you know, let's say you do pull off some major, you know, hoax and lead people to believe that as a Christian, when bad things happen, you're totally happy. And let's say they do become a Christian and something bad happens and they're not totally happy. They're going to feel confused. They're going to feel guilty. I I really feel strongly that we need to be in the habit of promoting just an authentic Christianity, especially because the world is watching. They want to know that God is big enough to handle our anger and our grief and our big major life crises. Yeah. No, I, I think that's very true that being being transparent can be a good testimony of, you know, Mm -hmm. because I I think as Christians, we may be one of the stereotypes is that we're fake or that we're, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I think another way we've been talking about giving thanks in these big hard things, but I think a way to practice that is by giving thanks, even for the little hard things, you know, Mm -hmm. oh, I'm late and here's another red light. Okay. Thanks God for this red light. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You know, just, or, you know, the, even though prayers that we do with our kids, most of the time, they're not things that they're still going to be upset about a month from now, or even remember a month from now, but you know, thanks that I got grounded, even though I wish I could be doing my computer games or something. I think that learning to give thanks for hard times, even if they're just kind of minor can prepare you to just maintain a thankful attitude when they're major. It does. And it, because it cultivates, a it shapes your view of God and your mm-hmm. perception of God just by putting yourself in that position of, yeah, you're the giver and yeah. I'm the receiver and I'm okay with that. I, I think that's really, really cool. And I think it trains your minds to be looking for the positive outcomes, mm-hmm. you know, and what you focus on is what you're going to notice. And so if something major happens and you say, wow, thanks God that we are, you know, struggling with our finances. Thank you for this huge bill that we weren't anticipating. I'm so excited to see how you provide for us. And then 
when small things or big things happen that show God's provision, you're going to kind of be um, tuned into those. Whereas if it was, oh, come on, God, not another bill. You know, we can't afford this. And that's what you're going to be focusing on. Yeah, I think there have been a few times where I felt that way, where I just feel like, well, if there's upheaval, it means God's at work, (laughs) whatever, for better or worse, you know, for whatever the situation is, good or bad, in my mind, it's like, well, at least God's working, or at least there's room for God to work, Mm because really... When I think about the very worst thing that could happen, it's just complacency and stagnation of your faith. And when life is okay and there's nothing going on, I'm not saying that you should, I actually, there was a friend of a friend in college who prayed for trials, like Mm -hmm. he said, because he wanted to be closer to God that way. I think that's a little too stoic for me, but to recognize when, when, when things are being shaken up that, well, God is, God's moving. There's, there's movement here. There's opportunity, like you said, to look Mm -hmm. for, you know, God's provision. I would agree for sure with the caveat that you still make use of the times of abundance and plenty. Because I used to be like your Mm -hmm. friend. Like I used to be like crazy martyr syndrome kind of person. Uh, Like I used to pray for trials all the time. And honestly, some some of it was because I thought it would get me attention. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. oh, look at this poor woman and what she's going through. Mm. Um, you know, and no, that's not a godly attitude. That's very (laughs) self-centered, but then other times when things were going well, I would feel this tremendous sense of guilt. I would be like, Oh, I must be growing complacent instead of saying, wow, God, thank you so much that things are going so well (laughs) so that I can focus on other things. You know, I, I, I did used to struggle with guilt when things started to go well. Like I've shared the story of, you know, all of our health issues with our middle son. And Mm -hmm. after a few years, when things started to calm down and it just felt like we were to this stable place, finally in our family, I felt really guilty. Mm -hmm. But then I realized I can use the stability to focus on others in a way that I couldn't if I were in the midst of a fiery trial myself. Yeah. Oh, and I think that is, it's a very, it's an easy like trap to fall into to think that way. And it's also the other side that I sometimes find myself doing is, oh, things are going so well. That means something bad's coming. It can't last oh, forever. Yeah, that's not a good mindset either. <laughs> oh, no, it's really not. It's just that, yeah, it's it, because, yeah, anyway. You know what I love? I think I forget if it's Proverbs or Psalms, and but it just says, here's what I want, God. This is totally the Alana paraphrase. Give me enough that I'm not tempted to steal, but not so much that I'm tempted to stop relying on you. (laughs) You know, I just, I I sometimes pray that for my kids when it comes to trials, it's give them enough that they're not spoiled, that they are mature and compassionate individuals, but not so much that they end up broken. (laughs) Right. That's my, my prayer for them when it comes to, to this sort of thing. Um, You know, one more tidbit you know I feel like we're we're close to wrapping up but I just want to share one more tidbit about giving thanks and so one thing that especially in in interpersonal relationships so you know let's let's talk about a marriage because this is where I feel like it could probably come up most is if you are like annoyed or angry or upset with someone about something that can almost always, or maybe even always, have a positive counterpart that you could give thanks for. So like an example might be, oh, my husband invited, you know, a whole house full of people again, and I've got to spend all this time entertaining people, and I just want to have a quiet night, grumble, grumble, grumble. Well, instead, you could say, wow, God, thank you so much that my husband is such a a good friend, you know, thank you for blessing our life with deep and meaningful friendship. So basically, you know, any person that you find yourself getting annoyed with, you can really take whatever it is that is annoying you and find sort of the positive counterpart to that, you know? Yeah, definitely. I think there's so many different circumstances that that could apply to. 
Mm-hmm. And, um, but relationships are the first thing that came to my mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely is. But no, I think that would be great is, is saying, you know what, this is the way this is, but look at all the blessings you have given me. And just that shift of focus, I think is, um, powerful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's a neat way too. if you're to the point where you're in the midst of a trial so severe that you don't feel able to give thanks for the trial itself, you know, it's a good way that you could give thanks for other things around it, you know? So, all right. Well, unless you had something else to add, we can wrap things up. So if you are interested, Jamie and I want to invite you to a free prayer resource we put together, which is 30 emails that'll come to you over the next month where they will give you different prayers that you can pray for your unsaved friends and family members. And we put this together just as a way that we could remember to pray just specifically and thoroughly for our unsaved friends. And you can sign up for that at prayingchristianwomen.com slash unsaved. And now we're going to leave you with our blessing and our benediction. May God grant you health and wholeness today. May he strengthen your body and soul to complete the tasks he has called you to. May he give you peaceful rest at night and joy and energy each morning. May he give you a sound mind capable of understanding his great love for you. May he protect you today from illness and injury, and may you walk in the certainty of his great love for you. And our benediction is from 1 Thessalonians 3, 12 and 13. May the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, as we do for you, so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Amen.